Welcome, good people of God. Welcome to Niles Discovery Church, a congregation united in God's love for everyone's journey, no exceptions. It is good to be worshiping God with you this afternoon. Whether you're joining us in person or on Zoom, we welcome you in God's love to this special service of release as we bid farewell to Pastor Brenda. We offer a special welcome to our conference, region, and association, and from our sibling churches who are joining us this afternoon. Now, I'm happy to invite the Reverend Latanya uh, Bynum and the Reverend Cel uh, Celestine Fields to offer greetings from the region and the conference. I'm pleased to be here to greet you this afternoon on behalf of the 61 congregations of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ of Northern California Disciples, including the congregations that are part of the Disciples and the United Church of Christ, and that includes Niles Discovery Church. There is wisdom that says that every experience is a learning experience. I actually heard that in a long, hard six months of CPE at a federal mental hospital. Uh, but it is true that every experience is a learning experience and we take what we learn with us wherever we go. I was looking for a poem that would fit this, uh, this time, and I found one that speaks of endings and beginnings and of taking all that we've learned in one place or another to the next place. And so it's a poem called Separation. And it says, it happens from time to time that rivers join only to part again. This lessens in no way those days and nights when they flowed as one river. Part now, as waters do, part quietly in loving kindness without doing harm. Move on serenely into newer rivers and newer nights and newer days of flowing. Brenda, go from this place. Go from Niles' discovery with what you already know. Take all the joy and all the hard-earned learnings and the easy learnings. Take all of those with you knowing that we will remain colleagues and we will remain ecumenical partners. Go always eager to learn new things, to teach all that you know as you join with newer rivers. God bless you. It is a joy to be with you again. It seems like I was just here last week, right? <laughs> Oh, good afternoon, friends of Niles Discovery Church. It is a joy to be with you again. Reverend Davina Jones sends her greetings, and she wishes that she could be with you all this afternoon, but she is doing an installation in the church in the Golden Gate Association. And I just want to offer a special thanks, just real quick, to Sandra Thomas the liturgical artist who came to our annual gathering in Palo Alto and set up our altar for us and that beautiful African peace. And what that meant to us was that we were in solidarity and we honored the people who are in Africa, the LGBT siblings in Africa who are suffering persecution right now and death. So thank you so much for coming and offering your gifts. And thank you, Niles. <laughs> and I wish you, Reverend Lorman, I wish you the very best as you transition into your new place of ministry. Please know that God goes with you. You go with you, all your gifts, your joys, your love of ministry, and go being your very best self in that place, serving God's people. Amen. And Pastor Jeff and you all that are here, God is with you in this transition. God has not forsaken you at all. You have a wonderful pastor who's going to lead you into the next chapter of your ministry and know that the conference is with you. And Reverend Dr. Bynum and the Disciples of Christ, you have two support networks. Okay? And we are all here for you. God bless you all. This afternoon's scripture lesson comes from the very end of the gospel according to Luke. This is at the very end of Luke. It is the evening, the day of Jesus's resurrection. The women found the tomb empty and Mary Magdalene saw the risen Jesus. 
He walked the road to Emmaus with two disciples, and they realized it was him in the breaking of the bread. Peter had also seen the risen Christ. Finally, Jesus appeared to the 11 disciples. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them. Well, good afternoon, friends, and greetings from Texas. My name is Russ Peterman, and I am the senior minister at University Christian Church, what we like to refer to as the other UCC here in Fort Worth, uh, where I'm coming to you from our sanctuary. And I'm greatly honored to be with you all today on this unique, this special occasion as you send Brenda on her way, releasing her from her covenant of call there at Niles Discovery Church. I had the incredible privilege to work with Brenda way back in 2009, 2010, while as a seminary student, she served alongside me at the First Christian Church in Concord as our student associate minister. And during that time with us, uh, we came to know her uh, as an incredibly approachable and a wonderful listener, uh, a dynamic preacher, a caring pastor, someone who is passionate about ministries, passionate about the church, passionate about matters of faith. And I was deeply impressed with her ability to articulate her faith and to, to understand how God moves and acts in this world. And I will say this, that I know as she has been for many of you, Brenda was also an incredible pastor to me as well. Uh, in many moments when I'd been discouraged and weary and wondering why it is that I do what I do, Brenda was there to remind me. And she was there to encourage me and to care for me. And even though technically I was her supervisor, she modeled for me. And she pushed me to be a better pastor through her passion for ministry and her love of the church. She was so loved by that congregation that a few years later, while I was away at sabbatical, they had Brenda come back to preach and to teach and to lead and to care for them while I was away. Truly, she was deeply loved by that congregation, and I was able to truly get away in that moment because I knew uh, that the church was in excellent hands. So all that to say, I greatly admire and I appreciate Brenda as I know you do. So the text that you heard a minute ago is from Luke 24. As you heard the very end of the gospel, after the resurrection, Jesus has appeared to the disciples, first at the empty tomb and then on the road to Emmaus. He ate with them, which was significant because God, uh, ghosts don't usually eat. And then proving that he was really fully alive and present with them in body and in spirit. And then he prepared to leave his disciples. He'd gone as far as he could with them, and he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them. Now, I want to be clear that I am not trying to equate or even compare Brenda with Jesus. <laughs> we all know better than that. And she doesn't have that type of ego, that type of Jesus complex. But I want us to think of the symbolism of that that she's gone as far as she can go with you. And on this day, she leaves you with a blessing and with her deepest gratitude. Now, I know that in many ways, she has been God's gift to you, both as a church, but also probably individually in these last 10 years. She's been with you in some of your greatest and most important moments in your lives, times of worship and weddings and baptisms at your bedside while you're in the hospital. As the Apostle Paul says that we are to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And I know that she has rejoiced with you. She has wept with you. Truly, she has been God's gift to you. But what I want to assure you, what I can say even if she can't, is that that has gone both ways. That you, church, have been God's gift to Brenda. That you have loved her that you have shared in the important moments of her life. And through your love and through your grace, you have coaxed her and helped her become and to grow into the more tremendous pastor that she is. And I assure you that it has made all the difference in her life. And she will never forget you nor the ministry moments that you've shared. Friends, I can assure you of that. And I will also assure you that she will carry all of that with her as she goes to Eden 
or she will love and care for them in the way that you have loved and cared for each other. You know, it's oftentimes in our leaving that we say things that we felt all along, but just never said. I think back to all of the memorial services that I've done and going on 30 years of ministry now, folks that I've had the deep and great privilege of memorializing, of offering their eulogy, saying sometimes things that those that loved them wanted to say, but couldn't. Things that they meant to say, but just never got around to it. And on a few occasions, I've been able to say what the person whose life we were celebrating wanted them to know and maybe wasn't able to say, but wanted to make sure that it was said. You know, I suspect that if everyone knew that they had one hour to live before the end of the world, that the phone lines would be jammed with people blurting out, telling one another how much they love each other. Do you remember on 9-11 when the, the plane was coasting down towards one of the buildings and one of the guys on the phone, he picks up the phone and he calls his wife. He said, I love you. Take care of the kids. Please have a good life. Sometimes it's in our leaving when we say things we should have said all along. You know, it's no secret to any of us here today that this is a hard time to be church. And it's true here in Texas, just as it is there in the Bay Area, though sometimes probably for different reasons. And we can name them. We can talk about how we've become a post-Christian culture. We can talk about the rise in Christian nationalism and how it's turning people off from the church, about the distrust of all institutions. And, and let me tell you, all of those recent documentaries about the Christian crazies has not helped our cause in any way, shape, or form. And there's a whole host of other reasons, too. And certainly COVID has just compounded those issues. It's just a hard time to be church. And there's fear in that. And there's grief. And sometimes just like at memorial services, those things just need to be named. They just need to be spoken out loud. And the truth is, there's not a silver bullet. There's no easy solution. There's no fast fix. There just isn't. No matter how much we want one, no matter how much we search and look, there is no silver bullet. And sometimes that can just be overwhelming. But I would argue that maybe that's a good thing because it's in being overwhelmed that opens us up to new possibilities. It creates cracks through which the light can seep in, when love can emerge. I heard someone say recently that God does God's best work in the midst of chaos. And I believe that's true in the midst of being overwhelmed that we learn to ask the best questions, to see things in new ways, maybe for the first time. You know, several years ago when Brenda and I were serving together in the church in Concord, a woman came to the church and she visited a few weeks uh, before finally joining our congregation. And she told us, this church is the best kept secret in town. And I remember Brenda and I having this conversation, what a nice thing to say but then we thought about it, and we realized that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> the church isn't called to be a secret. We're called to be a, a community of faith and action, making a difference in the community and the world to make God's love known through our actions. It's true through the church. It's true through each of us. And so maybe in many ways, that's your challenge going forward to let your light shine, to continue to be a place of an extravagant welcome, to open the doors every Sunday as wide as God's heart and to, to proclaim that there's room in the family of God for everyone, regardless of what you believe, regardless of who you love. Your call is to show everyone that walks through those doors that you're not just welcome, you're wanted. That you're not just accepted, that you're loved. You know, William Sloan Coffin once said that if you as a church fail in love, you fail at all things. There's an old story from Poland about three men who used to sit in the center of town talking about godly things. And one day a, a young boy came up to them with a simple question and simply asked, where does God live? 
And the men told the boy that God lives at the bottom of the well in the village. They said, come, we'll, we'll show you. And so they went to the well. And one of the men gently picked him up and held him so that he could see way down to the bottom of the well. And then the old man said, God is there in every village, in every well. God resides at the bottom. When they pulled him back, the young boy was clearly, obviously disappointed. And he said, you know, all I saw down there was me, a reflection of me. And the old man smiled and they said, that's right. That's right, my son. Now you know where God lives. So pay attention to your life, young man, because God is somewhere in it. Here's what I think, that when the church discovers, when the church remembers that part of God that is deposited in each and every one of us, that part of God that is waiting to be given away to a suffering world, in that moment, we will put away our silly, simplistic answers, and we will begin to embrace a life of love. Love of God, love of our neighbor. So no. There's no silver bullet when it comes to the future of the church. There's no single thing, just many things to be done with great love. You know, I suspect that when Brenda went there 10 years ago, she had plans and ideas. And today she leaves only with gratitude and dreams of what you will do by doing the best of things in some of the tougher times to be church. And I know that you will miss her. You will miss the way she challenges you to think beyond yourself, to see God in the faces of those much different than your own, but also to see the presence of God in your own face as well. So she led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up her hands, she blessed you. And while blessing you, she left. Amen. So now I'm really going to regret not wearing waterproof mascara today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Russ, for your wonderful message. Really touched me. And I know, I know it touched people here um, whose faces you can't really see, but I can see. So I wanted to take um, an opportunity to say thank you. Uh, to share the gratitude that I have in my heart. Um, I am so grateful for each of you. For those of you who are here in the room and for those of you here on Zoom, thank you for coming today and thank you um, for those of you who have walked with me these last 10 years. You have all been a blessing in my life. You have helped form me as a minister, as my place of my first call. And I will carry each of you with me um, into the future. I'm grateful for um, my clergy colleagues for being here today, especially for the messages of Dr. Tony and Dr. Celeste, and um, for uh, Reverend Hinckley, who will be up in a minute, um, for Jeff. I'm not often at a loss for words, you know. And for, for all of you, thank you for coming. When we feel gratitude, we say thank you. Sometimes also we give a gift. And so I want to offer you the opportunity, if you are feeling grateful today, to show that gratitude through a financial gift. And uh, for those of you here in the room, we don't, we don't pass the plate anymore uh, because of COVID. We just kind of got out of that habit, but we always have ways to give. So in uh, the back of the sanctuary, there's a basket. Uh, if you're on Zoom, uh, our, our wonderful cyber usher has been posting a link for you uh, for how to give online. Um, there's also a QR code. Is there a QR code? Did that happen? It didn't get out. Uh, but we can help make that happen if you want to give online. Uh, if you go to our, our um, website, nasdiscoverychurch.org slash give, you'll be taken to our donation page. 
and you can there's a little special line that you can make a special offering and put BL release in the memo. Put BL release in the memo of your check. And those gifts will go to the Bay Association Seminarian Fund and will be also split with the region for um, support for uh, members in discernment and seminarians. I was a beneficiary of that fund years ago when I was going through seminary and going through the members in discernment process. It's not cheap. <laughs> to become a minister. There are lots of expenses. And so the, the Bay Association, the conference, the region, um, Disciples Seminary Foundation, those all support ministers in training, seminarians who are called to ministry. So I encourage you to give generously to this fund to support the ministers who will come after me, for the seminarians, for ministers in training, and for the called and ordained um, new clergy. Um, this is the way we, uh, we allow the church to continue living by bringing up ministers, um, folks who are called from our local churches to, uh, to minister to the body of Christ. So thank you. On February 17th, 2013, the local church called Brenda Lorman to serve as associate pastor and teacher. I thank Niles Discovery Church, its members and friends for the love, kindness, and support shown to me these last 10 years. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. And as I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and accept that you now leave to minister elsewhere. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us at your departure. I forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. Do you, the members and friends of Niles Discovery Church, release Pastor Brenda from the duties of associate pastor and teacher? Do you. Do you offer your encouragement for her ministry as it unfolds in new ways? We do, with the help of God. Do you, Reverend Brenda, release this church from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here? and on relationship with others who may come to serve. I do, with the help of God. On behalf of the Bay Association and the United Church of Christ, I witness to the words spoken, words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. The member churches of our association, conference, and region hold each of you in prayer. We pledge our support in the transition signified in this service. Thanks be to God. Please join us in prayer. Gracious God, you have called Pastor Brenda to another place, another community, another task. We are sad to see her go. But we recognize that just as she has been your gift to us, so now she goes as a gift to another group of your people. We pray for each other now as our once parallel roads of pilgrimage diverge. We thank you for all that we have done or learned or shared together. We, we pray for Pastor Brenda as she explores and clarifies and puts into action the call that she takes, that takes her onward from here. May she grow in your grace, in the knowledge of your love, 
so that she may be a blessing to men. We pray for the community to which she goes and that they will value her, support her, learn from her, and encourage her. We pray for ourselves to say that you will keep us faithful to the vision we have shared and that you will grow us what we should be, how we should be, now that Pastor Brenda is no longer with us. As we part, we affirm that she, it has been your spirit who brought us together in the first place, your spirit who has enlivened our fellowship, your spirit who goes with Pastor Brenda, and your spirit who stays with us. It is your spirit who keeps us all together in the worldwide family of the church. Thanks and praise be to you, O God. Amen. Let's do my gift to the church. All right, so we have some parting gifts for each other. And as I thought about what I wanted to give to the church uh, as a gift, um, I thought about one of the, the parts of my ministry here that has been kind of my specialty, and that is evangelism and invitation. And since you won't have me to take people out to coffee anymore, there are lots of people out here who have gone out to coffee with me, right? <laughs> um, I, that's going to be part of, part of the gift here. Um, so the first thing, Mark, you can, um, I think you can put, let's put the mic down. Yeah. Take the big, the big present out first. Oh, we have some reading. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is my little evangelism library. Uh, I'm taking the, my, my books with me, but I wanted to leave some of the resources that I have found super helpful in uh, the area of evangelism and invitation. Uh, so, and two of them are by someone you all know. You know Reverend Tracy, right, who preached for us last summer, and you've seen her on Zoom uh, quite a few times when she was in between calls. Uh, two of those books are by her. She's where I learned about the coffee date. So... Uh, so I hope that you will, I hope that a lot of you will read them and that you'll enjoy learning some, some things um, about evangelism. And there's one more gift in there. So you can open that, it's a little, little wallet. But you don't have to take the bow off, just open it up. So we've got your Suju's gift cards. We've got your Devout gift cards. We've got your Starbucks gift cards. And we've even got one Pete's. I know that Pete's is not as popular for everybody, but if there's somebody who does like Pete's, Becca, take someone out to Pete's. Uh, so it'll just tuck it in the safe, and everybody can have a gift card and take somebody out to coffee. So. I almost thought you were going to give us some construction tools. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is I'm awesome. done with that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to a place that needs a new roof. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting new windows soon. So, so yeah. if you weren't active in the life of Niles Discovery Church when this all was being remodeled, Brenda was staffed to the team that led that design and remodel process. And thus the tool comment. So um, I was asked by multiple people to create something for you. And so I, I did with the help of Cindy. We, uh, we created this for you. Not the box. I, I, did, I made the box, but uh, <laughs> the inside part. I think I'm going to want to take this off. Yes. So uh, I'll just say while, while this is happening that the uh, art that you see around you was made by Sandy, primarily by Sandy and Cindy Sojourner, who are the, 
the, the brains uh, behind all of our liturgical art, and then the many other sewists and helpers who help create it. We have a whole team. Now, I want to say that um, Cindy and I made a lot of Sunday fabric oh while creating these, meaning <laughs> it's holy. <laughs> because oh my it is goodness. much, much uh, fussy cutting going on, and it is two-sided. Oh, look at that. One side represents creation, That's and so one side represents creating. <gasps> And uh, the oh my gosh! And the uh, label is made goes both ways, so it can flip <laughs> underneath. Look at that! When you wear it, oh. and you may need someone to help you put it on because it won't always flip when you want it. So oh, enjoy! Beautiful, thank you. And it was truly a labor of love. Thank you. It's got sparkly things on. <laughs> so um, you've thinned your library. It's time to add to it. Okay. Um, so oh, okay. go ahead and uh, just, yeah, let's just cover up stuff. So there are two books in here, um, one that I bought on spec and one that was on your list, so I knew you wanted it. Um, but the one on spec, uh, wild, geese. wild Geese, Geese have been an important symbol for you in yeah. your journey. And um, I know you love poetry, and there's poetry in there as well as essays, and so I'm hoping that it will feed you. And the other one is on Celtic spirituality, which is a place where both Pastor Brenda and I connect and um and so it's uh, that was the one that was on your list yeah I bought myself a copy too because it looked good <laughs> and then then the last thing is actually this um so i first met brenda mm -hmm. at eden church where she was um pastoral uh, associate pastor, okay. testing my call before going to okay. seminary and uh she came into a bible study carrying um a notebook or a bag or a something it was red it was a notebook. It was a notebook. And I said, ooh, is that Levenger? Which is an online story that both of us really love. Um, and this bag is a Levenger bag. It is ooh, sold as an art tote. Whoa. Um, that's their idea, is for you to be able to put art supplies in the mm -hmm. pockets and carry them to where you're going. For lunch. Or, well, yeah, big lunch. Um, so, uh, and I hope you're not leaving Niles Discovery Church carrying a whole lot of baggage in the negative sense of the term. But um, we do want you to continue to feed yourself as you continue to feed others. And I know that art is a very important part of your spiritual practice. And I know that the office space at Eden is sort of a bit of a shrug and a, how is it all going to work out and what's the space going to be and how much do i have to share and so i thought you might want to be able to move art back and forth with you so that's, this is that's beautiful yeah. thank you you're very welcome okay you stay i'm not we're not done one more gift for you <laughs> so one <laughs> So one of our cultural touch, our pop culture touchstones is Star Trek. Um, I think those of you who've been around long enough know that um, Jeff and I both like Star Trek, and I have used Star Trek references in my sermons. Some of you might remember that. Um, so that's the, thus the bag. So this mug, uh, so I know that one of Jeff's uh, idols uh, is, well, um, heroes. There we go. Heroes um, is Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, Reverend Fred Rogers. And uh, so this is a mug. It has uh, lots of sayings from, uh, from, from Fred Rogers and from uh, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And when you put your hot water in it for tea, he changes from his jacket to his sweater. <laughs> Um, there's not, that's not all. You should open the... Um, but, wait, but wait, there's more. 
So there's two gift certificates in there. Oddly enough, one of them is for Levenger. <laughs> because we first bonded over office supplies, high-end office supplies. And so, um, and that was like 16, 17 years ago. So we've been friends for a long time. And because I know that it will be uh, stressful not having a colleague, there's a gift certificate there for a massage with your massage therapist. <laughs> You're welcome. Right. And now I need to find some room here. We find my <laughs> find my notebook and my notes. So this, uh, this Lent season, uh, some of us read Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie's uh, Book of Blessings, The Lives We Actually Have. And uh, one day I read this blessing and I thought, well, there, that's the blessing. So receive this blessing written by uh, Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie for beginnings and endings. This life is made up of so many beginning, beginnings and so many endings. We start new jobs and leave old ones. We move to new cities and leave our childhood hobbies in our parents' basement. Sorry, Mom. We become new people slowly, hopefully kinder and funnier. Friends and relationships come and go, dreams blossom, and then they wither. And we find ourselves here once again at the precipice of change, afraid to let go and afraid of what will happen if we don't. Might this be a place of blessing, too? Blessed are we standing in the hallway between closed doors and one still to come, between the old and the new, between the worn in and the doesn't quite fit yet, between who we were and who we might become. God, make it remotely possible to grow and change, become open to new adventures, and untethered to routine or the same old. Because the anxiety rising in my shoulders and filling my throat tells me I am unlikely, unwilling to step forward. Blessed are we who take a minute to look over our shoulder at all we learned from what was the people we became, the people who loved us into becoming, the peace that came with familiarity. Blessed are we who trust this timing and who open our hearts to new, anew, to change, to friends, to new hope. Nervous, maybe heavy-hearted, but brimming with gratitude for a life so beautiful that it is hard to say goodbye. Blessed are we, turning our eyes ahead toward a new path, not yet mapped. God, give us courage to take this next step, and enough for the one after that, too. Remind us that you have gone before and behind and around and are with us now in our leaving, in our arriving, in our changes, expected or shocking, surprise us with who we might become. And friends in Christ, I encourage you to stand, if you're able, in heart or in body, to receive this benediction. Go forth from this place filled with hope, ready to welcome, grow, and serve. Know that you go with the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.